Welcome, 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 geeks and nerds, girls and boys, to a brand new edition of Geek to Me Radio. Today we're joined by voice actor Peter Jessup talking all about his project, New Wave, a Kickstarter project he's got going, how you can get involved. We'll talk to him about his voice acting career, all that and more. Stand by. We're talking TV, comics and movies, and video games. And if you're driving around tonight hearing us on the Big 550 KTRS celebrating 25 years in broadcasting, thank you very much for listening. If you're watching us out there in the web on Instagram, on Twitch, on YouTube, or Facebook, hello to you. And of course, if you're hearing us after the fact in the podcast form on Google or iTunes, wherever you get your podcast from, we appreciate your finding us there and subscribing and enjoying the show every week. Uh, we have a lot to get to this particular show. My first guest is uh, with me for, I think I think he's with me for the whole hour. I shouldn't say that before I check with him. Uh, but we've got Peter Jessup, who's done just a bunch of epic voices throughout the video game and animation world. And we're going to bring him in right now. Peter, thanks very much for doing the show tonight. Good to see you, James. Hi. Good to see you. Thanks for doing this. Um, this is very interesting because we've had Yuri on before. And Yuri is like, hey, I'm involved in this project, this really cool project. And I looked at it, I'm like, 80s 80s stuff yeah absolutely let's let's talk about this so uh to talk a little bit about new wave this is your baby it's your show what all can you tell us about it uh for those listening at home and out there in the world what are they uh what are they getting into when they take this project and take a look at it it's uh it's an animated show about uh the new wave music scene basically in the early 80s uh from the perspective of two up-and-coming young bands you got a guy band called the neutrons uh it's me and yuri and a couple other guys in that band and uh there's a great girl group called the earmuffs and we've got uh kari walgren mm. uh carolina ravasa uh abby trot sharon muthu and a fabulous uh fairly new voice actress um uh lisa foreman who is a real musician. She's uh, she's toured with the Foo Fighters, uh, the Prodigy, hmm. uh, John Five, uh, and just uh, they all sing and they're all amazing. So uh, each episode's got an original song that I've co-written with uh, Iggy Pop's old guitar player, a guy wow. named Eric Skirmerhorn. Um, so yeah, the pilot's written, the show is cast, all the characters are designed, everything's ready to go. We just need a studio to produce it. And they want money. Yeah. So <laughs> that's so weird. Studios so this, always do that, don't they? <laughs> yeah. So uh that's why we decided to crowdsource it and uh we started our Kickstarter. Um but yeah, it's uh it's a lot of fun. There's a there's a talking pug. Uh, who's voiced by uh, Armin Taylor, who is, uh, if you ever want to feel like a small child, talk to Armin Taylor, <laughs> because he has that voice. Just normally, hi, I'm Armin. You know? So, uh, and the pug only talks to the drummer, hmm. and only when there's no one else around. So, hmm. maybe he talks to the drummer. Anyway, <laughs> that's, you know, one of the little things. It's, uh, it's a real love letter to the eighties and to the, the whole music scene. We pay tribute to all the different styles musically that have gone on, uh, in that period. Um, there are a million wonderful animation references that we've scripted in. Uh, we've got guest stars coming in, in cameos. Uh, Eric, my writing partner has, uh, been in the music business for 35 years and he knows all of these guys so i'm not gonna 
drop any band names. We've listed a couple of them on the Kickstarter page, but um, that he's talked to, and they're happy to come in and just be wow. the two guys that run the arcade. And then you'll <laughs> see their names in the credits. And you're like, oh, my God, that's that band. So, you know. Hmm. And so when you, I mean, was, was it 80s music? Is it kind of like your jam? Because I'm an 80s kid. I'm unapologetically 80s. Like the music, yeah. the cartoons, the TV shows, all of it. So is that kind of just. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. The whole thing. The whole uh, MTV culture. Um, all the great stuff that was going on in animation at that point. Uh, you know, and, and not just the 80s animation. We're sort of paying tribute to all the great animation that has come before. Mm-hmm. Um, that's informed what animation looks like today. There's the Scooby-Doo episode. <laughs> uh, there's, you know, uh, there's all kinds of stuff happening in the show. It's it's uh, it's going to be just tremendous fun. We did a little uh, an element test for a fake opening, uh, which you may have seen that little trailer we put together. Mm-hmm. Um, that's not the animation style, but that shows what the opening is going to sort of be laid out like. Uh, with the theme song that we wrote so so when talk about because i like to find out log dig into it and get a behind the scenes kind of thing how long ago did you kind of conceptualize this idea to the point where now you're pulling the trigger on the kickstarter how long is of a process has this been we've been working on it for about three years oh wow okay yeah we uh eric and i did the first song in december of 2018 uh my writing partner paul and i started the pilot script probably early 2019 um we've got you know three scripts written we've got about 22 episodes with thumbnail descriptions of what they're going to be like what's going to happen in the show um we've got songs for the guy band we've got songs for the girl band um about 20 fully formed demos at this point for songs. Hmm. One of the things that we're going to need to pay for also is studio time to get in with an actual band and record them and hmm. that sort of stuff. So, so the Kickstarter, if I'm not mistaken, it was, it was 750,000 was the, was the final goal at the end that you're looking yeah. for. I mean, but yeah, we, uh, I know it sounds like a, a whole bunch of money, but when you break it down, that's what it costs to do a 22 minute animated show. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's crazy. Uh, the kind of stuff you got to pay for. And so we sat down and we did a whole uh, budget for it. And, um, you know, a couple of guys, uh, Phil Lamar and Steve Bloom did a, uh, like a super trailer for. Um, Goblins Animated. Goblins Animated, right. And that was five minutes. And they needed 210 grand for that. <laughs> so, you know, it's, it's not cheap. Uh, you got a whole crew of animators. You got a whole bunch of people that are designing, storyboarding, drawing. You got editors, you've got sound editors, you've got engineers, you've got recording, you got to pay the actors. And we probably could have gone the road of, hey, can you do this for us for free? But I, you know, these are professionals that we're working with yeah. here. And I'd, I'd like to see them, you know, I like to see them get paid. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. You always want to see artists who do, do, do all the work get paid for it. Obviously, yeah. that's one of the things. You know. But I would I would expect though because you, you know when we say seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars to that sounds like a lot of money but at the same time you've got this incredible cast who's got a very solid track record I'm sure they yeah. are reaching out to their people because um, Yuri's got what about eight million followers on Twitter so we can get them to kick in and stuff like that yeah so. I mean it's yeah we've got um we've got a it's a great cast you know Yuri I think's got like one hundred twenty thousand followers between all of us I think there's about a half a million followers on on Twitter. Um, people aren't hearing about it. Hmm. It's been weird. We had a nice initial burst because we did a little pre-launch publicity. Um, but we've, you know, only had like 700 hits on the Kickstarter page. Hmm. And, uh, so that's when I decided, you know, well, maybe we'll reach out to, to folks like you who have an audience who can listen. We can actually tell them what's going on, uh, with the show because, you know, let's face it, it's Twitter. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, a, oh, hey, that's a cool picture. Whoop, whoop, whoop. You know, and you just, <laughs> and move you just on. skip right past it or you heart it and you're done. Right. So, you know, it's a, it's a question of connecting uh, the fact that we're putting that stuff up in social media to the fact that we're asking people to come join our team and help back the show, you know, see what we can get from that. So, 
And it's a great concept. Like I said, there's so many things that uh, would draw someone in between the animation, between the voice cast, between the people who like music, you know, the different bands, everything like that. I'm thinking that should cast a pretty wide net as far as who this would appeal to. Yeah, I think it's it's got a really broad appeal. Yeah. And it's not just, you know, guys like us who who lived through the 80s and loved everything that was going on back then. Uh, you know, I've got young grown, but grown kids. Uh, and I've made a point of making sure that they had a decent musical education. But, you know, <laughs> they love 80s music. Yeah. So there are a lot of people like them out there, who younger folks who who really sort of are fascinated by all the weirdness that we did back then. Yeah, and there's a lot, like I said, between uh, the, my, the first thing I immediately thought of when I was reading through the Kickstarter description, I was like, oh, I wonder if we're going to get a little gem in the Misfits kind of uh, homage at some point. I think so. Something like that. It's, <laughs> that was one of the first things I thought about because that was, again, that was one of those 80s cartoons from Marvel Productions yep. with G.I. Joe and Sunbow and everything like that. Yeah, we don't we don't have any toys to promote. Well, um, that's okay. Which was a big a big part of 80s animation. Uh, right. Was, you know, if you had a toy, you got a show. And, uh, but I think, uh, yeah, there's going to be, there's, I don't want to tip my hand too much, but yes, there is a, there's a very, a very cool gem reference in, in the show at some point. So nice. Yeah. And that's got to be a lot of fun when you're crafting the story too, because obviously we've talked about the music and the cast and everything, but the story itself. So when you, when you sat down to write this, was this something that just kind of like you were spitballing with friends and be like, wouldn't it be kind of cool if we did this? And from there it kind of snowballed. How did the actual idea for new wave come about? It's, it's actually, it's an idea that I'd had for a while. And the thing that was sticking, you know, that was keeping it from really happening was where am I going to get original music? Hmm. And do you reach out to, you know, cool bands that are, really popular now and and if so how do you do that and it's like hey you want to write us a song and they're going to say who are you <laughs> um and uh my writing partner eric also does he was doing promo for a while and so we got to know each other and we'd go out and we'd have lunch and we were both in kind of starter bands uh in the 80s and we were swapping stories and we had a lot of the same <laughs> stories uh, one of the great gags is there's going to be a different keyboard player every couple of episodes because they can't <laughs> hang on to a keyboard. Player. Rotate out. <laughs> um, but the the really fun part is they're all going to be voiced by the same voice actor, Mitchell Whitfield, <laughs> the voice the keyboard player. Um, all the keyboard players. So every episode, it's going to be a different character, but it's still going to be the same guy doing the voice. Nice. So. <laughs> A little more heavy lifting for that person then who has to come up with a different voice and different accent and different every time. Or, or does he? They can all just sound the same, quite honestly. You know, that'd be even funnier. Yeah. No so. <laughs> and you're talking about the pilot, obviously, with this is what yeah. the, the thing is going to fund. It's a 22-minute pilot, you said, in Conception? It's a 22-minute pilot. Um, and the basic story is it's, you know, the, the, the four guys decide to start a band. Um the earmuffs in the arc of the story and in the sort of background of the of the world we've created are already established and they're pretty successful they're not stars but they're they're a good popular local band at this point so the guys really sort of look up to them and uh decide they're gonna start their own band <clears throat> and the struggle of of getting it together and putting that first song together and uh you know I'm not going to tip off the nice twist at the end. Okay. It's, a, it's, okay. A, it's a good twist. It's a fun, make you happy kind of, okay, these guys are pretty cool kind of a thing at the end of the show. So so once it's completed, once you've, you know, once, because this is going to be a successful crowdfunder, I can tell it right now, you're going to get your full amount. It'll be successfully funded. Once you have it done, you get the production and everything's ready. That's the pitch that you take to studios and then they go from there right. and then they pick it up. So in when you're writing it out, how many episodes do you envision? Have you got enough stuff, or is it like an eight episode, twelve episode, sixteen? No, we've got about twenty three episodes. Oh wow! Thumbnail. Okay, uh, we've got we've got three scripts finished. We got the pilot, and the second and third episodes. Um, and you know, my writing partner was like, "Well, should we start a fourth one?" And I said, "Well, I'd like to see you get paid for the first one first. Yeah, that would be nice. So <laughs> let's do the first one. <laughs> see if we can get it picked up, and you know." then we can start writing full time. Um, and we're, we're obviously we're going to have to bring in other writers. It can't just be two of us doing the whole series. Hmm. Um, and there are going to be episodes that are going to be 
primarily focused on the earmuffs, which is the girl group. Um, and I would rather have a, a showrunner or a lead writer who's female writing those because mm -hmm. I think they have a much better understanding of the voice and what needs to be addressed in the show. So, yeah. you know, we're going to start once, once it gets picked up by a studio, uh, we can really staff the whole thing and, and really try and make sure that everybody gets represented. So. And I'm assuming it's, it's, it's interesting too, because the way you're doing this, you would pitch this before it might go to like Cartoon Network or something like that. That and all those, all the streaming platforms that are out there with Netflix yep. and Amazon, it's like endless possibilities too. Yeah. And, you know, we've been trying for the past couple of years to just get in and pitch with our pitch deck um, and we couldn't get a meeting. Hmm. So that's one of the reasons why we decided to crowdfund it. Um, and, you know, I, I get it. I mean, I'm a voice actor. They don't know if I can write or if I can produce or if I can do music. Uh, so I'm an unknown quantity as far as that goes. Hmm. I mean, they may have heard of some of the stuff I've done, but I didn't write that stuff. Yeah. So. You know, um, yeah. So that's one of the reasons. That's that's the main reason we decided to do a crowdfunding thing. So, and I know uh, when we we actually had Phil on a couple of years ago to talk about Goblins Animated, and it's one yeah. of those things. A lot of people now who are writing their own stuff and they want to back their own stuff because that gives them a lot more control creatively. They don't have to worry well, about it. That's so the that's the another big too. perk, right? Yeah, that's the other reason, too, is that we're not going to have anybody, you know, peeking over our shoulder and saying, oh, you can't, you know, you shouldn't do that or do this instead or, you know. Yeah. Let, let's put Coca-Cola products in the in the scene <laughs> with the, it's like, eh, yeah, maybe not. Only if it's new Coke, because this is the 80s yeah. again. We... <laughs> Crystal Pepsi. <laughs> it's making a comeback. Is, they're all drinking clear drinks and nobody knows which one it is because <laughs> everything is clear for about a year. That's right. Yeah. Such a weird time, but I love it. Again, I'm, I'm a huge 80s nut. And yeah. we talked a little bit about uh, some of the cast people. So is this when you kind of like with your networking or do you have someone specifically in mind for certain parts? Or was it just like, hey, we'd love to have Tara Platt do this because it'd be a good fit? Or how did the, the audition the, process? A lot of the parts were written specifically for people. Okay. Um, uh, one of them was written for an actress who actually moved to France. Hmm. So we got extremely lucky when we found her replacement. That That's Lisa Foreman. Uh took the, over that role um but yeah most of them are written with people in mind and and i wrote a show that i could just call people and say hey you want to do a project with me um you know i've been in the business a long time i've yeah. worked with them with everybody on the show uh in one form or another and so we all know each other we're all friends and uh there was really no hesitation i mean yuri actually said yes before i even finished asking <laughs> i said i'm working on a project and i yes I haven't even told you what it is yet. He goes, I don't care. <laughs> You're doing it? Yes, I'll do it. The 80s so, nostalgia would only add to his excitement, I would think, once he hears yes. it. So. <laughs> yeah. Well, he's got such a great character, too. So, But it's got to be so exciting, too, because, like I said, you find yourself at a place in time in your career where you know all these people who are willing to jump in and who know you well enough to say yes. That's got to be a good feeling for you personally, too, as, a, as an oh, actor, yeah, no, as, a, was, as a, a artist. It was wonderful. Yeah, it's been wonderful. And some of them have known from early on. Um, uh, Sharon Muthu and Abby Trott and Courtney Taylor uh, and Armin Taylor and uh, O.G. Banks uh, have all been involved from really probably the second or third month. I called hmm. them up and said, hey, I'm writing a show. I've got a part for you. Would you do it? And they said, yeah, if you get it finished, let me know. So, hmm. yes. yeah. I just I like the idea of the crowdfunding too. Like I said, it kind of gives you creative control. And I I love that's why as soon as Yuri said, "Hey, you know, you're doing this crowdfunding thing," I love having crowdfunding people on because I think that's exciting. I think it, the fans are excited because they feel like they're involved with something too. It's not just something the network's well, they, making; they they're flipping on, yeah, and all yeah. all the perks too. You know, what? I've got you for the whole hour, don't I? I want to be cognizant of your time. Are you okay to stick around? Sure, yeah. Okay, yeah, so it, here's what it's we'll Sunday do. Sunday evening, what am I doing? <laughs> <laughs> Perfect, just want to make sure. I always want to ask. Yeah. But uh, so what we'll do is we'll take a quick break. We're going to come back and we're going to chat with you about uh, the idea of the crowdfunding and a couple other things we'll get into. And we'll ask a couple questions about some other roles that uh, you've played over the years uh, that I, I actually love so much. And we'll continue our talk with Peter Jessup right after this on geek to me Radio on the Big 550 KTRS. Please stand by. Gotcha! 
that'll keep her in her place. <laughs> Rose Petal, Nestina, and Orchid dolls come with all you see here, each sold separately. New from Canada. It's Kenner's Seaweeds Tropicals. Camille, Baby Cascade, and Pelly Pelican. She's tan, has pretty blue hair you can comb, and looks cute in a little grass skirt. You can collect Flora Tropical, Baby Fenella, and Little Dog de Bloom. Seaweeds Tropicals. Seaweeds Tropicals. Camille, Baby Cascade, and Pelly. Other Seaweeds Tropicals sold separately. Introducing the new Play-Doh Mop Top Hair Shop. Well, there's a Mop Tops, the Play-Doh Mop Tops. Just turn the chair. They grow Play-Doh hair. There's a Mop Tops. You can comb it, wave it, style it or shave it. The Play-Doh Mop Tops. You can let it grow down to his toes. There's a Mop Tops. From the Play-Doh Mop Top Hair Shop. The Play-Doh Mop Top Hair Shop. Sold with everything you see here. New from Kenner. Here's Sit and Spin from Kenner. You can spin around, sit around, even carry it around. Let's go inside. You can spin some more like before, most anywhere you put it down. Let's spin around, sit around, even carry it around. Sit and Spin, the indoor-outdoor take-along spinning toy. Wow! You can spin like fun, spin like two. How you spin is up to you. Spin around, sit around, even carry it around. Offer cost information and conditions equal housing lender licensed in all 50 states and MLS consumer access .org, number 3030. Hey, this is Yuri Lowenthal, but you may know me recently as Peter Parker slash Spider-Man. And you're listening to geek to me Radio. And we're back. This segment brought to you by our official movie sponsor, Marcus Theaters. That's the website, MarcusTheaters.com. Uh, right now is a great time to go see movies. Uh, I'm so glad they're back because there was that time during COVID when the movie, I remember seeing Bloodshot right before movies went away. And then I, as soon as they came back Labor Day, I was out there and I saw Tenet in theaters and that whole dark period in between when we had to stream everything at home was, was hard to get through. But we made it. Uh, Marcus Theaters is a great place to go see movies. And right now they've got a deal. They have their unlimited popcorn bucket. So you go, uh, you get uh, the movie popcorn bucket and all through the year of 2022, you take the popcorn bucket in and it's just $4.50 to fill up this ginormous thing of popcorn every time you go to the movies. Marcus Theaters is always making it easy to go see the movies. You can start with the website, MarcusTheaters.com. You can also find the movie tavern or Marcus Theaters location closest to you. And you can buy your tickets right there online, see reviews. One of the fun things, too, is you can also enroll in their magical movie rewards program, which gives you points for seeing movies, for buying your snow caps, for buying your popcorn that, that you can then use to see more movies and get more snow caps. And of course, if you're doing a holiday party or something like that, there are movie theater rentals for their private screenings. You have the theater to yourself for you and 20 or 30 of your closest friends. You can add concessions and kind of however you want to do it. If you want to have a presentation beforehand, then see a movie. That's a great way to see a movie too, to celebrate an office party, a holiday event, mitzvahs, both bar and bot, however you want to do it. It's a great time at the movies, and Marcus Theaters does it right. Start with the website. Once again, MarcusTheaters.com to find the Marcus Theaters or movie tavern location closest to you for the greatest movie-going experience in the galaxy. Before we took that last break, we came back here, and you heard the voice of Yuri Lowenthal bringing us back, uh, one of the many people that Peter has enlisted in his upcoming project, New Wave. Uh, the thing with Kickstarters, I'm always fascinated, the tiers, because you can do different levels for people's uh, sponsorship and their interest and everything like that. So when you design the tiers, was there a lot of thought that went into it? It's like, oh, did you kind of compare other Kickstarters? Kind of how did you come up with the tiers for your particular Kickstarter? We did. And a lot of the Kickstarters, if you're like doing a Kickstarter for a game or uh the guys from Critical Role did a Kickstarter for their animated pilot. Um, they've got, you know, pledge a certain amount of money and you get some cool Dungeons and Dragons dice and that kind of thing. We don't really have that sort of thing to give away because we're making a show. Um, yeah. And we don't have anything in place that, that you know, like those guys did. Um so the tiers that we came up with, we've got, uh, you know, we'll do a custom musical message for you. Mm -hmm. So Eric and I'll sit down and we'll record a little tune with your name and we'll send it to you. <laughs> um, we've got um, New Wave t-shirt 
with the big new wave logo, all the characters on it, uh, with the big, you know, sort of salmon colored sunset eighties thing yeah. in the background. Um, uh, we've got a video, we've got a digital postcard, digital poster. So once the show starts going and we get the, the scenes being drawn, we'll, we'll pick a really cool setting and make a postcard out of that. And we'll, we'll send that to you digitally. Um, some of the higher tiers are, uh, you can get a thank you credit. Um, we've got one, it's a pretty high tier. If you, uh, pledge $5,000, you can come and watch us record. That's pretty cool. Uh, yeah. I mean, we can't fly you out, but if you can make it out there and you want to come to the studio and you can hang out while we do the, with the recordings, uh, even the music recordings, if we're doing a song, you want to come and see that being done instead, you know, you can pick which ones you want to do. And, um, then I, I put it in sort of as a tongue in cheek one, but we've got a few that if you want to pledge 10 grand, you can get a part on the show. That's we'll, very we'll cool. write you a one or two line part and you can come and be <laughs> on the show. That's um, very cool. Yeah. So that's, you know, that's the sort of thing we had to offer because we don't really have anything tactile. We don't have any solid stuff to hand out really. So no merch. No merchandise, yeah. so it's going to be something no like merch that. No merch yet. But one of the things you guys did have, which I thought was a very inviting and enticing one, was the signed cast poster. So if you guys have the the poster, and then if you right. have, like, if you go to a convention and you see you and Tara and Carrie all at the convention, you're going to pay more than that to get everybody's signature on an item anyway. So I think that was another great deal you guys have. Yeah, that was actually Courtney Taylor's idea. She's okay. like, let's just do a signed cast poster. And I was like, well, I didn't want to ask everybody because you're kind of pitching in to do this. And like, no, we'll do it. Yeah, that's so, yeah. a great perk. Yeah. Yeah, but that's it's so much fun, like I said, to because you, you do get in as a fan, you get to get in on this project. And uh you, you know, again, if there's I saw one of someone already took one of your ten thousand dollar spots, uh, so yes. they're gonna be written in. So and I think you only had five of those available to begin with. We've only got five because we've only got so much time to do the show. Sure, yeah. You yeah. Know? But so, uh, so if we yeah. got you know, two hundred people wanted to be on the show, we could have to <laughs> Do an hour long episode. You just need seventy five people at that tier, and you can have your whole seven hundred fifty thousand. So, but yeah, that's uh, obviously time wise, that does lend itself to a certain constraint. But just what a yeah. fun project! So, as you're working on this, I know a lot of people we've talked to, artists and writers, and everyone. Uh, when COVID shut everything down, it almost sounds like because twenty twenty was kind of like just a blank year that must have given you guys time to really focus on this and work on it. You were obviously doing oh, other yeah. things, but it's kind of yeah, nice to have that extra project. I would think it, it was Uh yeah. Work really slowed down. Um, You know, the studios were all shut down. We had to do stuff from home. Uh, and yeah, it made, it made, it made work a lot harder and it made it, it made it slower. So uh, I ended up with a bunch of downtime and that's when Eric and I wrote most of the songs. Um, and then Paul and I did the other two scripts cause we're like, well, we, what else we got going on? Let's, let's work on the yeah. next one. Um, so yeah, we've, uh, we, we had, you know, it was, it was a good chance to, to put a lot of extra time into the, into it and really polish it up. So. And you've gotten, we talk about you, the work you've done. You've done so many great projects. Uh, one of my favorite cartoons is Avengers Earth's Mightiest Heroes, and yeah, you got to voice too. the Vision. I mean, there's there's yep. other Avengers cartoons. There's United We Stand in the 90s, and then we had Avengers Assemble after. But everyone I've talked to, I've never heard anyone say that Earth's Mightiest Heroes wasn't the definitive Avengers cartoon because it was just like the comic book came to life. They had to be such a blast working on that show. It was, it was amazing, and it was the only Marvel solo project that was ever done. Hmm. Um, Marvel had broken away from their other studio contracts. This was the first thing they had ever done that was just Marvel. And I didn't get to join the cast until the se second season. Um, so they had done the first season. We recorded the second season. Uh, and that's when Disney bought Marvel. Yeah. And uh, so we had to wait while they redrew Thor and Captain America because the costumes on the in the movies had changed. <laughs> so they had to redo all of those panels with the new the new costumes. And so when it finally came out, uh, Vision wasn't American anymore. <laughs> right. So, you know, it was, it, <laughs> so they decided, well, we're just going to start the whole thing from scratch. And they started Avengers Assemble, which was also a lot of fun. You know, uh, I watched that. And uh, I think Fred Tattashore was the only one that made the, made the leap from one show to the other as the Hulk. The Hulk, yeah. 
Um, and he's because, of course, he did. You know? Yeah. So were, um, are, were you were you a big comic book fan? Was like uh, Marvel oh, Comics yeah. something you were into growing Marvel, up? Marvel was my comic, my main comic source. Uh, I was an X-Men, New Mutants guy. Um, Avengers were fun. My brother was a big Iron Man fan and a big Thor fan. So I'd read his Avengers stuff mm. and their solo stuff. But um, yeah, I was an X-Men Spider-Man guy. Um, I was collecting at one point, I think three different Spider-Man series as they were coming out. I think they had up to five, I think at one point between Marvel Tales yeah. and everything else. It was kind of crazy yeah. for a while. And, you know, of course, during the 80s, you had the Secret Wars. Yes. Which was the wonderful, you know, just crazy off the wall stuff happening. Yeah. The Beyonder and all of that stuff. And they got the Joe Piscopo joke in there. <laughs> I am from beyond. Oh, really? I'm from Jersey, too. You know. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that was uh, just and, all those uh, crossover series like that. Secret Wars. And then they had uh, Secret Wars oh, yeah. 2, which wasn't quite Secret as Wars fun. 2. Well, but... because they'd done it. Yeah. You know, and, and you know, they were trying to get, retread the, the tire there. And I think I think it was. You can't beat the original. Yeah. But then also at that point, DC kind of blew the lid off of things with the Dark Knight. Yeah. And Watchmen and uh, all of those that really sort of set the tone for the whole of the 90s. Uh, yeah, the more grim scene. and gritty kind of a take. Yeah. Every, everything got a little darker, um, a little more serious. You know, Batman had been goofy. Right. And, and suddenly whoa <laughs> you know batman's punching his fist through the floor and breaking that guy's leg and right. what a little more of a darker um, dark night <laughs> yeah so you know that was that was just earth shaking for me i loved that and swamp thing when, oh uh, yeah alan moore's swamp work on swamp thing uh, man yeah. you know that was uh just some really amazing stuff was coming out of there so and funnily enough i've done more dc animated stuff i than noticed I have that Marvel. Yeah, yeah, you got to play a whole host of DC characters. You got to be a Green Lantern <laughs> at one point. Uh, you've been yeah. Steppenwolf. Uh, you actually got to voice yeah. Superman. That I had to have Superman. been fun. Yep. Uh, I was Dr. Volko. Yes. Aquaman's mentor. Uh, uh, what else did we do? Tharok in oh, uh, Justice League Tharok. versus Fatal yeah. Five. Tharok that in was Fatal Five. So, yeah. And again, that Justice League. Fun. Animate Justice League Unlimited and everything. That that world, that's one of my all time again favorite with they just celebrated their twentieth anniversary of that series. Yes, they did. And I've had I've Although had Therox really a legion of superheroes villains, That's correct. So, yes, true. You know. But it was kind of cool to see him and you got to play with Kevin Conroy and Susan Eisenberg. Yeah. No, that was great. And I'll tell you, it's funny. Uh I did uh we did Escape from Arkham. Yeah. Uh and I played the watch captain. I had this big fight scene with Batman. And I was so excited because I'd never worked with Kevin Conroy. Mm -hmm. I'm like, I'm finally, this is a bucket list item. I'm <laughs> going to get to work with Kevin Conroy. Oh my God, this is going to be great. And I show up and I'm like, well, where's Kevin? And they're like, oh, he recorded his efforts in New York. We're just going to do yours. Like, oh. uh. And then he was announcing that was his last project. And uh, so years later, and I'd, I'd done Superman uh, and Justice League Action came out. Yeah. And they, I came in to do Steppenwolf. And there's Kevin Conroy. <laughs> and I got to do a scene with Kevin Conroy. And I was like, oh, this is so exciting. So, yeah. yeah. We've had Kevin on too before. And he talked about doing those things for the video games. And he said it's nothing like working on an animated thing because he's in a booth alone. Oh, yeah. And the guy will say, okay, now try it with a little bit of a smile. Okay, now try it sad. And they, he, he's doing the same line like... 40 different times and they move on to the next line and there's all the yeah. lines of dialogue do you you've done a lot of video games as well uh, uh, yeah. what's been like a i can't imagine they're all just kind of like oh because people wouldn't keep doing them but what have you had a like a, a video game experience that's been head and shoulders above the rest for you yeah i'd say probably fallout 4 um fallout 4 was great because the character i played valid and dance has this great story arc uh, and I'm a Fallout fan anyway. I'm a gamer as well. So I hmm. had played Fallout 3 and I played Fallout New Vegas. Uh, and I got in the booth. And of course, they don't tell you what you're working on. Right. It's all very hush-hush. And my first line was, there was a group of ferals over by that. And I stopped. I'm like, oh, <laughs> this is Fallout. <laughs> just, don't, like, just, yeah, just read the script. Don't, don't, don't. I'm like, <laughs> like, you know Fallout? I'm like, yes, I know Fallout. 
So that was very cool. Um, and, you know, it was just, it, again, it, you're in the booth by yourself, but but uh, Kalal Bogdanov, who did the voice direction, is great. Hmm. Um, he was terrific to work with. And, uh, you know, he lets you do your thing and sets the scene for you, tells you what's happening. And you're doing four different responses or five different responses, depending on what your affinity is with the player. Yeah. So if you if you're mad at the player, you're going to have one response. If you're mm, I'm not so sure about this guy, you're going to have a different response. If you're neutral, and if you like him, or if you're crazy about him, you're going to have different reactions to these things, and that gives you a chance to really sort of, uh, you know, run the gamut emotionally with every single line. Yeah. Which is kind of cool. And, and then you get the relationship stuff with some of the characters. So you know there are romanceable characters in Fallout Four. So we have all of this interpersonal stuff going on, and you know, it was cool. And when you said you've got, you know, grown up ish kids. So when did, when they're playing games, do they know you've done the voice and they're like, oh, dad, that's you. Or do they recognize you or do you kind of, they know ahead of time what games oh, you're doing? Oh, they know ahead of time. Okay. Although I would, I would, you know, my kids are, I've got two 22 year olds and a 21 year old. And, uh, the, the firstborn, uh, was playing fallout and I'm standing behind him and he's talking to paladin dance and I would say the line before he'd say it over his shoulder and just to freak him <laughs> out. That's gotta be fun. That was fun. <laughs> <laughs> now with the video game stuff, they're not all done like that. I'm sure you have some that are recorded with a couple people other than just you and the director. Or am I mistaken? No, pretty much. All, they've only done it that way. There are oh, a wow. couple of games I did. We did masquerada. Um, we did with group reads. So like I would read with Matt Mercer or, um, you know, whoever else I was in a scene with. Um, we did, um, uh, w there was a an attempt to turn XCOM into a sort of RPG uh, and the fans mm. went absolutely ballistic and hated it mm. before it even got halfway through production. Because mm. uh, it's a turn-based strategy game. And they're like, don't mess with our game. Makes sense. So... They ended up re-recording it like five or six times, but the, the process for that one was to have the whole cast in the room and do the cut scenes like an animated show. And that was fantastic. That was a lot of fun. Um, and uh, after a certain point, they decided, you know, we're going to put turn-based strategy elements into it and we're going to do this and we're going to do that. And it was hmm. kind of neither fish nor fowl. And... My my son played it for a little bit, and he's like, I just can't, I don't know what we're doing. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you can pause it, and you can put your guy here, and you can do this with that thing, and you put the gun here, and it's like, yeah, but yeah, but why? Just either make the game one way or make it the other. Don't try to combine the two. It, it never really quite gelled. Hmm. Uh, and they fired everybody. Oh, my gosh. Uh, except for, I think, me and Yuri. And they brought in Courtney and Matt Mercer and all these other people to come in and do in a booth, line, 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 line. And I had to re-record all my dialogue, oh. um, which is fine. You know, I'm, I'm certainly happy to work that way. And it's another session. So you get paid. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. So, <laughs> you know, upside there. And, uh, you know, so that was that was good. Um but yeah, mostly it's just you in a booth. I just did a couple of games recently. Um, actually went back in the studio for the first time in many, many months. Um, I can't talk about them, but. Was that uh, a little fun, disconcerting was... to kind of work back into it? Because a lot of people, a lot, especially voice actors, set up something at home. You're working from home. No problem to go back into the studio. Was there any, I know people are kind of finding their own way out of this COVID. Is, is, was it a little weird to be back in studio? I, I was very happy to be back in the studio. You know, I've, I've had my shots. Um, it was just me. They sanitized the room. And, you know, it, yeah, I mean, I feel better in a booth mm -hmm. than I do in my home studio because my home studio is a closet. <laughs> right. You know, I had to do a makeshift studio. Um, and, you know, I would rather be in a booth with an engineer so I don't have to pay attention to levels and all that other stuff. And I can just go in and do the work and, and yeah. not have to do all the technical stuff. It makes sense. Makes sense. Yeah.
And again, if you're, uh, if you're just tuning in, we're talking to Peter Jessup. He's got a brand new Kickstarter. We'll circle back to that. We're talking a little bit about all the voice work he's done and uh, I think almost 100 credits between all the animation and the and the uh, video games and everything like that. Um, I'm going to take another quick break. You're okay to stick with me still? Oh, yeah. All right, cool. We're going to take another quick break. We're going to come right back, chat more with Peter Jessup after this. Please stand by. into the light and they change into even more powerful creatures. Now, the wine in me is free. Take this! Ah! Supernaturals. Lionheart, Skull and Ghostling sold separately. New from Tonka. from Fisher Price. Squeeze them and they really purr. With FindRx coverage, you can definitely Medicare. Find the plan that's right for you by visiting walgreens.com slash Medicare. Hey, this is Phil Lamar. Homies, Conrad. I'm the samurai known as Jack. And you're listening to geek to me Radio. And we are back. Geek to Me Radio live every Sunday on the Big 550 KTRS. The show would not be possible without the support of our premier sponsor, which is, of course, the Greater St. Charles Convention and Visitors Bureau. The website, of course, discoverstcharles.com. They just had their first weekend of Christmas traditions, which is the longest running and largest Christmas festival in the entire country. It's been going on. I think this is its 47th year if I'm not mistaken uh, but you can go down there it's a great time they were kids we talked to a family from New York who was down there came in just for this event which is mind-blowing to think about how big this event has gotten um, but there's families come down you can interact with different Christmas characters you can talk to Jacob Marley and Ebenezer Scrooge you can interact with Snegoroshka who is the ice maiden from Russia we have Père Noël from France all sorts of international gift givers we have people celebrating Hanukkah, we have people celebrating Kwanzaa, so it's really a lot of fun. It's a free family event. You go down there and just have a good time. This is an area that's entirely made up of small businesses, so this is a really great time to get out and support small businesses as well. And uh, just go down there, have some great food. There's restaurants all up and down the area. There's gifts you won't find anywhere else. You don't have to worry about supply chain shortages because they've already got stuff, and they've, a lot of these things are handmade. So if you're looking for something unique, to give to somebody if you're looking for some place new to try to eat or if you're just looking for a good time check out the website discoverstcharles.com that's discoverstcharles.com you can click on the events tab plan your trip and like i said if you're from new york if you're from out of the country it goes through the end of december so come on in have a great time start the trip by planning at the website discoverstcharles.com we always say it's an historically good time and also, we want to remind you, we have online shows that go up in addition to this live show. We have an online show that drops each week. Go to geek2meradio.com. You can check out the backlog of all of our archives there. And this one will probably be up if you're listening to this online. It's probably about Wednesday or so, I'm guessing. And my guest this hour is Peter Jessup, uh, voice actor extraordinaire. I, I love this. When I first heard your voice, I'm like, 
that's definitely a commanding voice, and you've had a lot of military roles, which has got to be a lot of fun when you're playing like in Call of Duty or some of these other that you've gotten to do. Um, is there when you're playing a military role? Is there research you do, especially for some of the ones that are dated either? past or future do you do you do any research other than what's given you as notes in the script for your character um not really i think it you know soldiers are people too you know you're just a guy uh although i will say my one of my favorite was colonel burton in the command and conquer if anybody played yeah. those um and i remember doing the first several sessions of of command and conquer and he's he's like this little super for those of you who don't know he's one of your special units you can get a, a colonel burton and you can send him out to do commando raids and he's like a one man army you can send him in and he'll blow up an entire building and do all this <laughs> stuff and you know some of the lines are like yeah that was left handed <laughs> so like you think that was impressive i was i wasn't even trying kind of a thing um and the little character initially was this little guy with like a flat top haircut and i came in one day and the play testers were playing and the producer was like you want to see him playing it and i looked down and colonel burton was bald that's pretty cool <laughs> and made made him bald because i'm bald i thought that was awesome that's very neat <laughs> <laughs> so yeah the motion capture i know a lot of people because there's been uh, the back and forth about the you know um it's it's stunt work and things like that have have you the motion capture does it bug you at all is there anything that you've, you've uh don't enjoy about it I haven't actually done any. Oh, really? Uh, I've done facial capture. Uh, I've never booked a motion capture. Oh, okay. Yet. So, yeah. Um, and I'm not a spring chicken anymore, <laughs> you know. I, I blew out my knee years ago. Oh, no. And, uh, yeah. So, I don't know that I'm going to be doing jumps and flips and whatnot. But, uh, you know, it'd be fun to still do some of it. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. And you've got, like I said, a very impressive resume with all the stuff you've done. With uh, you've you've gotten to play in the Marvel and the DC sandbox. You've even gotten to voice a Transformer. Uh, so it's really yep. cool all the stuff you've gotten to do. You do you have like souvenirs from different uh, projects, like a, a Soundwave action figure or a, a Superman thing that's molded after a certain sculpt? Do you do you have any kind of like a, a okay. trophy room, no, yeah. like a Bat Cave? I've got. Uh, well, my wife is a, a what would you call her? A memorabilia collector. Mm -hmm. So she's got a selection of cabinets. She collects 70s uh, memorabilia. Okay. And I get a shelf. <laughs> One shelf out of so all the I've cabinets. So yeah, <laughs> I've got my vision characters. I've got my paladin dance pop. I've got, you know, a um, uh, little Superman figure. And I've got a couple other things like that. Hmm. Um, you know, I bought her the, uh, there was a thing going around for a while. It was a single available married to paladin dance so i got her the mug because she's the only one who actually gets to use the mug <laughs> that's true she's actually married to paladin that's dance. true that's a good point so, <laughs> and no so she's a she's a 70s collector do you have 80s memorabilia because we talked at the very beginning obviously well, we've doing got a new we've wave. got both yeah okay. we've okay. got both he's but her her big thing was the 70s initially so and it's got to be, like I said, again, if you're just now tuning in, we're talking to Peter Jessup, and he's got the Kickstarter for New Wave, which we talked about at the beginning as well. But it's, uh, w when you've lived through that, it's got to be an interesting, so many things you probably want to draw into it as you're writing it. Like you mentioned all the asides and the little Easter eggs and things oh, yeah. like that. Even with 22 episodes, I'm sure there's some stuff you're like, ah, oh, we just don't have room for this. Was there a lot of ideas maybe set up for a second season possibly, or have you not thought that oh, far yeah. ahead yet? Hopefully, no, we've got, we've got enough to bleed over into a second season. Oh, great. Okay. Um, and I think, you know, like we were just joking earlier about the whole, we've got a scene uh, prepped. It's not really in any of the scripts yet, but where they're all sitting around and all of the beverages are clear <laughs> and nobody knows which one is whose because they can't tell what they're drinking. Right. Like this is, you know, just a seven up. No, it's a crystal Pepsi. No, it's a Bartles and James. No, it's a, you know, whatever the other, uh, the Smirnoff ice, right? whatever the other clear drinks, everything Zima. was clear for well, a was probably more nineties, but still. Yeah. Zima. There you go. That was the one I can remember. Oh, um, I miss the Bartles and James people. But you know, we've got an episode, uh, with a Zydeco song in it. Hmm. And I was trying to explain to somebody just yesterday what Zydeco was. She's like, what's, what's, what's that? Cause she's <laughs> too young. And I said for a period of about six months in, I think 1986, 
uh, Cajun culture exploded for some reason. And all the restaurants started serving blackened salmon and blackened chicken and red beans and rice. And Cajun food became a huge thing. And Zydeco music was everywhere. Paul Simon did a Zydeco song. Yes, that's right. Yes. And and then poof, it was gone. Yeah. And, and you know, people under the age of like 40 have never even heard of it. So uh, I'm explaining that we, you know, we've got this great Zydeco episode where they get stuck in a swamp in Louisiana and they have to <laughs> improvise a Zydeco song, which uh, is actually one of the favorites that I wrote, that we wrote. Hmm. So, um, and she's like, I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And now people will know and we're going to, we're going to give props to everything that happened back then. I think that's, you know, because a lot of really cool stuff did happen back then. So uh, I, I, I take it this has to be time. set at a certain point in the 80s where you can reach back far enough to get some of the earlier 80s stuff, but still catch on to some of the... So yeah. Is it set in like 86, 87? It's set in... It's like the Goldbergs. Okay, okay. It, it's 1980-something. Gotcha. <laughs> so we're going to kind of go back and forth. You know, there's going to be the episode where they see their first compact disc. And, you know, I remember clearly New Year's Day driving to the Harmon Carden showroom to listen to a compact disc. And they played Peter Gabriel on these giant magna planar speakers, you know, the big Mylar sheet speakers. Right, right. And just being blown away. It's like, wow, <laughs> there's no hiss. There are no pops. What's going on? And, you know, so those kind of revelations are going to be throughout. You know, there's going to be the the video game progression over the over the 80s video games changed yes pretty pretty profoundly from the beginning to the end um yeah i remember playing you know uh, the arcade version of uh, super mario brothers mm -hmm. with my roommate yeah and we were mario and luigi going through the pipes banging crabs with our wrenches and you know yeah and then became super so. mario brothers and kind of exploded from there yeah, we used to go yep. to Showbiz Pizza. That was one of my favorite things to do as a little kid, Showbiz Pizza, and get the big pizza, watch the animatronic band play, and then go and yeah. uh, have our arcade party. That was always fun. And I think a lot yeah. of the 80s culture, too, is Stranger Things has brought a lot of that back into the fourfold, too, things like that. So oh, yeah. it's uh, it's nostalgia based. And it's funny that enough people who are younger who've seen those shows, like Stranger Things, do recognize, and it kind of catches on with some of them. So that's, like I said, this right. is a great time to be launching New Wave. Oh, yeah. And one of the characters actually works in a record store. See? That's his day job. He works in a record store. And yeah. Tara's character owns the record store. <laughs> so, you know. Um, yeah. And that's, you know, there's a whole cultural shift that took place in the 80s. And I think it'd be kind of fun to document that. Even if it's done sort of as part of the theme of the show, as opposed to Hey, look at what happened here. And look what happened here. Right. It's just going to be stuff that happens. Yeah. That's a lot of fun. I think if you're yeah. listening right now, uh, we'll put a link to the Kickstarter in the show notes as well. But if you go to Kickstarter, just look up New Wave. It should come right up. A uh, lot of different levels, a lot of different tiers. Uh, we're coming up to the last minute or two of the show. Peter, tell people where they want to keep up with you on social media, websites, Instagrams, uh, Twitter. I am I am uh, at Jessup Peter. On Twitter, I'm Dad Jessup on Instagram, uh, Peter Jessup on TikTok, um, and shout out to my brother Ken who lives in St. Peter's. Oh, perfect! Hi, That's Ken. right up the road. Look at that. Yeah, I'll just wave so... down Highway 70. Hi, hello. <laughs> <laughs> there he is. Well, I can't appreciate enough how much uh, the time you've taken to be on the show with us. And like I said, it's a it's an amazing project that you're working on, and uh, Thanks, we're going to do everything we can to make sure we do our part to get you fully funded. So. Best of luck to you. Continue success. And hopefully we'll have you back on once the pilot has been picked up by a series or by a, a studio, I should say. Absolutely. And I'll, I'll do your I'll do your call out in character as my character. He's got an English accent. It's That's great. awesome. Yeah, actually, if you would stick around, because I do have another favor to ask of you before we uh, because we're going to sign off here. But if you would stick around for just a moment, I appreciate it. You got it. Um, again, thank you to all who are listening out there. Uh, if you're streaming this out there in the world, thank you very much. If you're hearing us on the Big 550 K2S, thank you for listening, and we'll have another show next 
week. Again, check out geek2meradio.com. We're still pushing to get to 1,000 subscribers on the YouTube page. I've been very, very bad about promoting the YouTube. So if you're listening to this right now, go over to YouTube, hit the little subscribe button over there. We're going to try to get to 1,000 subscribers before the end of the year closes out. And thank you, as always, to Joey V. If you're watching this on Instagram, if you're watching us on YouTube and Twitch and on Facebook, it's all because Joey V is coming in here to set everything up and make it roll correctly, sound as good as it does. I wouldn't have the show without my executive producer, Joey V. So uh, until next week, my friends, we'll talk to you then. Weather, traffic, sports, and live local talk. This is the Big 550 KTRS St. Louis, Ladue, Glen Carbon, University City, Edwardsville, Manchester, Wood River, Grafton, Collinsville, Pacific, and the world. From ABC News, I'm Chuck Severson.